Gospels, Jesus speaks a lot. A lot about the kingdom of God. Jesus teaches about God's kingdom and, and parables, which I shared with the children a little bit earlier that is translated to mean little. In the 13th chapter of, of Matthew, we have seven parables or seven riddles where Jesus tells about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus tells over 40 parables in the gospel, and only two are given an explanation. The intent is that we have to figure them out ourselves. We must, we must think. We must look it up. We must ponder. We must study the, the parable for meanings. Jesus knew what he was doing. Because we get a deeper appreciation for something when we have to work for it. Remembering, asking, remember asking our teacher something and they respond, well, we'll look it up. While we complained about, about looking it up or having to look it up, we never forgot the answer once it was obtained by us. The next is a riddle or, or a parable contains truths about different reasoning on how to arrive to that truth. Working a, a math problem with our son Will and doing his homework, I discovered that they teach math different now than when I was in sixth grade. Because see, Will and I can do the exact same problem together. We can come up with the exact same answer. But we arrive at it through different reasoning and logic. And Jesus' parables are the exact same way. It doesn't really matter how we arrive at the truth, but that we uncover the true meaning. An understanding a parable includes all of our senses. When you read the gospel, notice how many times Jesus uses the words see, hear, understand. The last thing about parables that Jesus tells is that in the quest for understanding, there are arises more questions when we look at something closely. Our search for understanding of Jesus' words leads, leads to more discovery. If Jesus just told us what it meant outright, then all we would have to do is either accept it as true, because Jesus said it, or we reject it because it doesn't fit in the relevance of our everyday life. And when we find ourselves in the position of either just conforming or denying the words of Jesus, instead of seeking a deeper, meaningful discovery of the truth that Jesus is revealing. Sometimes, sometimes we find out more about ourselves and the mystery of discovering Jesus' teaching than the pure enunciation or revelation of God. That's the sermon in itself, really. That sometimes we find out more about who we are in the mystery of trying to discover Jesus' teaching than the pure enunciation and revelation of God. We begin this series today as we look at seven parables in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew alone. And in the next four Sundays, we will look at Jesus' parables about the kingdom of God, what it's like, what the kingdom of heaven is like. The first parable today is about the sower. And we have an explanation, and it is helpful to have the explanation of this first parable. So that we can lay the groundwork of trying to comprehend the remaining remainder of Jesus' parables. Jesus' stories, Jesus' parables, these riddles, they use rich and practical lessons for his disciples. You see, those gathered around him that day, and, and for us, he uses practical lessons about what the kingdom of heaven is like. 
Jesus' image is of farming, of seeds, of merchants, of pearls. Everyday familiar images to the first listeners of his words. You see, Jesus uses what is already familiar to them. He actually meets them where they are. And clearly, Jesus wants everyone to pay attention. As he reads and he begins to explain the parable in our scripture today, he uses the word listen. He uses this to emphasize that what he is about to say is very important. We meet a, a grower or a farmer or a planter who's, who's going to plant some seeds. We, we know... We know who these seeds are. The different seeds represent each and, and every one of us to, to some extent. You see, some, some seeds will be dropped on the path and, and eaten up by, by birds. People will not believe or think the good soil is important in their life. I mean, they, they know who Jesus Christ is, but have no desire to seek a meaningful relationship with Others find themselves on rocky ground. They soak up the light and the rain at the first show significant. They first show significant speedy growth in life. But their growth is deceiving because the rocky soil prohibits deep roots. These are excited. Very excited about their relationship with Jesus Christ. But the moment life begins to wear at them, they stop growing. No growth equals no reproduction, which causes death. And the new life dies under the sun without ever forming deep roots. Some are seeds sown in a bunch of thorns. We know who we are. Those are the ones that seek Christ, but... Maybe not want to change their lifestyle. They rather stay in the pain of the thorns than change their environment or seek a richer soil. No matter how hard they try, the thorns and the weeds eventually went out and suffocate their growth. I think what's what's evident in Jesus' story and, and Jesus' riddle. That some seeds are intentionally planted in a place where they will get nutrients. They'll be planted in a place where, where water and sunlight is plentiful. And they need everything. They receive everything they need to, to be healthy and, and grow. And, and we know these people. They have been nurtured. And they have been cared for. They've been brought up in a, a good, healthy, loving family. They seem to have no struggles in life. Their environment has been one of loving, of caring, of, of compassion, and of forgiveness. You see, the kingdom of God is the good soil, which causes one to, to plant very deep roots. Roots strong for when the storms come. Deep roots for when there is no rain. Deep roots that protect one from the elements of life. That is what the kingdom of God is like. It's like the good soil. It's a place that will, will nurture us, a, a place that we can grow, a place that protects us from the elements of life. And in God's kingdom, in the kingdom of heaven, in this good soil, we're reminded that we are not alone. You see, crops are not just one single plant. There are rows and rows of others just like us. And when God's kingdom is like the good soil, the soil that gives us all we need, we cannot help to reproduce. Those individuals in the kingdom of God multiply. They produce more seeds, which produces more harvest. It's the place... It's the place that every plant or person desires to be. Part of the crop. In the good soil. 
In the kingdom of God is the only place where all our physical, emotional, and spiritual needs are nourished. The kingdom of God is the good soil. It's the place where every seed or people desire to be. Notice something Jesus doesn't say in this parable. Sometimes it's not what he says. Sometimes it's what's omitted that's very important. Notice something that Jesus does not say in this parable. He never, ever, not once indicates. Indicates that the seeds on the path, the seeds on the rocks, the seeds and the thorns are less important than the seeds in the good soil. Not once does he indicate that just because you're on the path, just because you're on the rock, or just because you're in the weeds, that you are not loved and desired by God. He never once says you are a waste if you're not in the good soil. No. 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 Every seed has the opportunity to, to seek the good soil. Every seed has the potential to produce a great harvest. Every seed is precious and, and full of possibility. Every seed desires to be in the good soil. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is that place. God's kingdom begins with us now. Because today, today, the good soil awaits. <laughs>